Mentoring students is one of the most fascinating aspects of being a professor at the university. Uh, it's, ba it's basically if you want like the, um, the energy I have in the morning, I mean, it frequently comes from the interaction with uh, younger uh, young students that are interested and excited about uh, the stuff we do at the lab. Uh, yes, in general I'm working in game theoretic aspects of cryptocurrencies. And uh, this means that I'm standing uh, if players have incentives to follow the protocol. And uh, which means that uh, the following the protocol is the best strategy for them um, uh, because they will uh, earn uh, more rewards. And uh, in these months, uh, the specific project I'm working is that uh, given a specific uh, reward mechanism, uh, I'm studying uh, how players uh, have incentives to play and uh, in which state they will end up and if the state is stable and uh, which properties this state uh, has and uh, this is useful because uh, we want to find a reward mechanism uh, that will incentivize players uh, to follow the protocol because uh, they will earn the most rewards in this way and in, in addition this reward mechanism will incentivize them uh, to end up in a state that is stable and it has uh, some nice properties. Uh, for example, one nice property is that players are organized into a given number of pools. For example, are organized in K pools that it is uh, not too many, not too few, for example, one or two pools to just mine. And, um, and this is the general idea from what I'm doing now. And um, uh, uh, the, the way we are doing is that we combine game, the game theoretic uh, aspects and cryptographic aspects uh, in order to find definition uh, to support uh, the theory from, uh, from uh, this uh, problem and uh, to prove theorems regarding uh, the state that uh, in which uh, players will end up uh, with this record mechanism. Right, so for the past uh, months we have been working with uh, Mario uh, Laranguera from Tokyo and uh, Professor Kiyas on uh, designing the account management scheme and the different actions that uh, a user can take using their wallet, such as uh, issuing transactions, issuing delegation or even creating blocks. So we have uh, designed uh, the scheme that will be implemented in the next Cardano release, Shelly. And we have uh, designed the implementation and also we have, uh, uh, we provide a theoretical uh, model that uh, this implementation actually covers. So we have uh, uh, structured um, a theoretical model. We, have, we provide some proofs that uh, we can go from that model using uh, some uh, steps all the way down to the implementation that we will actually uh, define. Uh, so now we are working on uh, attestation techniques uh, to, for uh, uh, injection detection attacks, uh, for code injection on, of code and data. And our job is to detect and uh, alert the user that the system has been attacked. Uh, and uh, we are thinking of extending uh, this to use uh, secure hardware uh, on uh, how to protect uh, against uh, different uh, blockchain attacks or to make uh, the blockchain more um, usable. Uh, at the moment I'm involved in two projects. Uh, one is called Oxchain, uh, which is providing some um, blockchain-based uh, services for uh, a famous uh, charity called uh, Oxfam. Uh, my role uh, in this project is to design and implement uh, some smart contracts. Um, uh, also, I'm involved in the second project, uh, which uh, tries to answer the following question. Can we use blockchain and its capability to check 
availability of some service. Uh, this service can be uh, provided by some off-chain uh, companies such as cloud computing. Uh, and the service can be like data, storing the data and checking the, the integrity of data. My research is fairly open-ended, um, so there aren't any concrete results I can show at this time. But what I've mainly been working on is uh, formalizing what smart contracts are. And there, there has been quite a bit of progress on that. So right now I'm working on uh, trying to decompose Ethereum into many small components which put together make up the entire system and then working from there we'll see which of those components are actually necessary for smart contracts. So one of the preliminary results for example is that you don't necessarily need uh, a uh, token to back a smart contract. So. Well, obviously it makes sense that you have some sort of incentive for miners and so on. It's not necessarily integral to the concept of smart contracts. You could imagine, uh, for instance, uh, private blockchains which don't have tokens at all, but only deal with uh, contracts and contract state in some way. Since uh, recently uh, the lab uh, is growing and uh, we are having more uh, scientists and PhD students. Uh, it provides more opportunity to create more projects um, and uh, collaborate with more people uh, from different backgrounds and knowledge, uh, and which is uh, uh, very interesting uh, because we can tackle the same problem from different angles and also we can expand one specific idea and project, uh, which is great. All the researchers and the students here at the lab are working uh, in order to enhance and uh, uh, add new features in the protocols that we already have, under the assumption that these features are tested and uh, are proven secure in the theoretical models and the frameworks that we use from the literature. And uh, every week we also have iterations so that each researcher and each student knows what the other teams are doing and also provide some feedback that they might uh, want. We have a very good relationship with uh, our professors, with uh, members of the lab, and uh, it's, uh, very, it's very fun and uh, very fun to work here and uh, yeah, very satisfying.